We're going to test our spinal extension range of motion. So this is a pure self-assessment test just to see where you're moving from in your spine and where your bias is in movement. A lot of times we end up getting used to moving over like one segment at a time when we're doing any kind of movement. So whether I'm reaching, whether I'm going back, whether I'm just doing a morning stretch, sometimes we only end up moving mostly from one segment and we start to create like a hinge in the back. And the problem with this is when we become too mobile in one area, we usually become really stiff in the other areas and your spine shouldn't move like this, right? It should, it should bend and extend all together. So this is where we really want to see what's moving in the back and where could we maybe possibly improve so that we're not getting any restriction, any tightness, or potentially any pain, whether in the low back or the upper back. So let's see what's happening. So first test I'm going to do, I'm going to have you sit on the ground. Now, if you are not quite comfortable coming into like a cross-legged position, you can also bring your legs out. And I just want to make sure that the knees are going to be higher than the hips. This is going to lock out the low back so that we're only going to bias into the upper back called your thoracic spine to see what's moving here. Now, again, if this is too hard to get onto the ground, you can also sit on like a low chair or a low stool or bring your, your feet up on something. So whether it's putting like an ottoman underneath your feet as you sit on the couch or in a stool, it's just so that again, knees higher than the hips. Okay. So in that seated position, now we're kind of locked out through that up, that lower back. Now I'm going to see how you move into the upper back. So I'm going to take my arms and they're going to help assist as I try to reach up and overhead. So let me show you from this side. Now, if the arms are really limited, you can also place the thumbs onto your shoulders here. And we're going to try to see, can I open from my upper back and what happens? And this is where setting up a camera or having someone film you is really helpful just so that you can see what's happening, okay? Because as I move into this extension, I want to see, is my upper back doing any movement? Can I get some upper back movement? So we're just testing it. If you're noticing that like you want to move from that low back, try to bend those knees up again. If you're noticing, oh, I'm going to fall back or it's all moving as one stiff board and there's not really any extension happening, good thing to notice, you might be really stiff in that upper back. Let's stand it up now and assess the movement as the whole spine. So now again, readjust your camera if you need to. Um, we're going to see what's moving into the the whole upper back now and all the way down to like where the pelvis connects. So now I want to see, can I reach overhead and lean back as much as I can? And you notice, whoa, I got a lot more extension than I did when I was seated, right? Even if I bring my, my elbows here and I don't quite worry about my shoulders, if I lean and open back, Ooh, I have a lot more. So this indicates that even though I might get a little bit from my upper back, I'm getting a lot from my lower back. And this is where if I'm getting too much movement just from my low back, I could create some hypermobility. So we don't want, you know, to create too much movement just at one segment here. That's where we can start to get some different disc pressures and different sensitivities happening in the low back. And that's what can cause some of that pain, right? And if I don't move from my upper back well, if I'm not moving all throughout my segments here and I'm only kind of moving into my low back or where my low back meets my my upper back and kind of creating that hinge that I talked about in the beginning, then it creates this really stiff upper back, which again, I need this upper back so that I don't put so much pressure on this low back. And I need the low back all the way up to my upper back so that it all works together and keeps my spine nice and young and mobile and also functioning well. So where it meets my pelvis into my SI joint isn't getting so sensitive. My shoulders can move better because my upper back moves better. So it all is necessary to 
create less tension in that low back, create less pressure on my shoulders or my SI region. So if you're noticing that you get a lot of pressures in these areas that I'm talking about, this is probably something you want to focus on and see if you can help improve. Now, there are links below for curated programs specifically for the back, especially to help improve that range of motion, get that spine functioning and more mobile altogether where it's strong and more mobile throughout its range of motion. So you're not fearful of moving the back, but you have more motion through the back. And this is just going to create a stronger, more stable body so that we're not hinging from one joint and we're moving beautifully throughout all the vertebrae. Don't forget, if you love what you're learning, I have so much more in stock for you. So hit that subscribe button, check out the other videos I've done in the past, and leave any comments of any suggestions that you have for videos in the future. And I can't wait to help you feel incredible and amazing within your body.